This training video continues from Protection of Databases and Digital Preservation, Part 1. The following slides address the types of protection that may cover a database and the terms for that protection. We learned in the last video that a database may be covered by two different types of protection as defined by the database directive, copyright or sui generis. We learned that sui generis requires the maker of the database to have a substantial investment in the creation of the database. The nature of this investment is further explained in Article 7.1 of the database directive. According to this article, the investment must be made in either obtaining, verification, or presentation of the content. Obtaining refers to the collection and listing of pre-existing data in the database. Therefore, obtaining applies to the content of the database. The processing of the collected data does not need to amount to a substantial investment. Rather, the decisive criteria is that the investment results in a structured database. The acquisition of an existing database does not constitute a substantial investment and will not alone qualify for sui generis protection. Additionally, creating data solely in order to build up a database does not amount to a substantial investment under Article 7.1 of the Database Directive. Verification refers to the process of updating existing information in order to obtain a complete, correct, and current database. Verification does not refer to checking data for relevance during the creation of the database. Presentation refers to the process of structuring and arranging the material within the database. There are further qualifications as well for defining the maker of a database. In Recital 41 of the Database Directive, the maker of the database is defined as the person who takes the initiative and the risk of investing. In order to demonstrate substantial investment, the maker of a database must do more than present an underlying idea for the database. They must demonstrate further measures, hiring employees, financial planning, etc. The maker of a database has some further rights beyond reproduction, adaptation, and alteration. Under Article 7.1 of the Database Directive, the maker of a database has the right to prevent extraction and or reutilization of the content of the database. Extraction and or reutilization are evaluated either qualitatively and or quantitatively. Qualitatively, the substantiality of extraction and reutilization can be determined based on the investment into the extraction or reutilization and or quantitatively based on the volume of material. Material. A substantial extraction or reutilization are not allowed under either definition. Furthermore, the earlier mentioned criteria for substantial investment must also be taken into account. Copyright and sui generis protection both expire after a certain amount of time. Copyright protection expires 70 years after the death of the author. If a database has more than one author, the expiration period does not begin until all authors are dead. Sui generis protection expires 15 years after the completion of a protected database. <laughs> Determining if a database is protected and how it is protected is complicated but necessary. In order to alleviate the difficulty of this task, Timbus has developed the Legalities Lifecycle Management Tool, or LLM. LLM acts as a guide to minimize legal risks for companies who want to digitally preserve their business processes. Infringement of exclusive rights can be avoided. For more detailed information about database protection and other legal issues that impact digital preservation, check out Legal Aspects of Digital Preservation, available through Edward Elgar Publishing, now also available as an ebook. Thank you for your attention during this training tutorial brought to you by the Timbus Project. Please have a look at some of our other training videos and materials on the legal aspects of digital preservation and other tools available on our webpage.